Hi, my friends. We're going to start a new book today, this week, and it is called The One and Only Stewie Lewis, written by Cambria Evans. Chapter one is called Reading Wizard. I wake up and decide to have a stomach ache that's so bad I have to stay in bed. Hey, stupid, yells my big brother, Anthony, who's four years older than me. Move it or you'll miss the bus. I, ne I never let it slide when Anthony calls me stupid. The very least I do is tell mom, but this time I don't say, say a word. I don't move. I don't get dressed. I don't go downstairs. It's Wednesday, French toast day, the middle of the school week day when mom makes a special breakfast. Mom walks into my room. What's going on, Stewie, she asks. Stomach ache, I said in my whiniest voice. I'm too sick to go to school. She puts her hand on my forehead. She gives me a real once over. You don't have a fever. You look fine. Get dressed and come downstairs. Your French toast is getting cold. I ate three pieces of French toast. I know it doesn't look good for someone with a stomach ache, but I can't help it. Mom makes the best French toast. Maybe she won't notice. I guess your stomach must be feeling better, says Mom. Oh well, maybe if I eat another piece, I'll really get sick. Come on, Stu, says Anthony. We have to get going. We don't want to miss the bus. But of course, I want to miss the bus. I'll do anything to miss it. I'll clean my room. I'll clean Anthony's room. I'll even clean the whole house. Bingo, that's it. Mom always wanted a house cleaner. Hey, Mom, how about if I stay home today? I'll clean the whole house for you. She rolls her eyes. First, it was a stomach ache, and now you want to clean the house? She feels my forehead again. Maybe you're sick after all. I try to look as green as possible. Okay, Stewie, what's going on? She said. I'm sick of school, I told her. Anthony snorts. Hey, Stu. He catches himself just in time. How can you be sick of school? It's only our third day. I decided not to tell the truth. How can I tell him my awful secret? How can I tell him I've been in second grade for two whole days and I'm still wicked slow at reading? Everyone said the light bulb would go on by now. It's not bad it didn't happen to me last year. Or, I'm sorry. It's bad enough it didn't happen last year or over the summer. But if the kids figure out I'm still no good at it, or even worse, the teacher does, I'm toast. Last call for the bus, bro, says Anthony, and he pulls me out the door. I walk into my classroom. It's actually full of very cool stuff. A person could have a lot of fun here if that person already knew how to read. My teacher, Miss Curtis, is writing the morning message. She wants us to call her Ginger. Mom think that's thinks that's very modern. I think it's dumb. We're the first class she's ever taught. She says we have a lot to learn from each other and she wants us to be good friends. If she was my good friend, I would tell her my secret, but she's not. Hey, Stewie, says Will. Dad's taking me fishing on Saturday. Wanna come? Thanks, I say. I'll ask Mom and tell you tomorrow. Me and Walt Fishman have been best friends forever. He shares his dad with me because mine moved away. Today, Will is the only good thing about second grade. I always feel better when I share yucky stuff with him. So I decide to tell him my secret. On the count of three, get ready. One, two, and after fishing, we get to go to paperback heaven. Will is all pumped up. They're having a giant sale, and if you buy one book, you get one free. Dad said I could get five books, so I can actually get 10. Maybe you can get 10 too. My stomach does a little flip. There's no way I'm going to paperback heaven with Will. No way at all. I just remembered something, Will, I said. Mom says I have to clean my room on Saturday. Well, can you ask her anyway? Okay, I say. I feel really guilty now. Not telling the truth is not getting easier. But what else can I do? Will was reading way back in preschool. He was reading when he was born. He's like a reading monster. He eats books up, humongous, fat ones even. He's been real patient too. 
He's been waiting years for me to catch up and read as fast as he does. I just can't let him know it still hasn't happened yet. Good morning, everyone. Please join me on the meeting rug. Miss Curtis is waiting in her rocking chair by the easel with the morning message. Just follow my pointer and we'll all read today's message together, she says. I look around. If everyone is looking at her pointer, I'm safe because no one will know and be looking at my lips, which definitely won't be moving. Hello, second graders. This morning we have DEAR. That stands for Drop Everything and Read. Our dear buddies will be Mr. Stone's sixth graders. Later, we will have Jim. Let's talk about how dear works. Ginger. Nice reading, friend, says Miss Curtis. Does anyone have questions about dear? D-E-A-R. I know all about deer, says Sam. I'm a deer expert, Ginger. My grandpa lives in the country. He's got tons of deer that live with him. Duh, says Lily Stanley. Ginger doesn't mean that kind of deer, Sam. She was talking about D-E-A-R program. Right, Ginger? That Lily is a big know-it-all, only she doesn't know how annoying she is. I almost tell her too, cause Sam looks really embarrassed. But I'm trying very hard not to notice, and that's not always easy for me. We'd love to have you tell us about deer, Sam. Perhaps at our next sharing time, Miss Curtis smiles at him. Then she gives Lily one of those teacher looks, not the happy kind either. Friends, listen up. Here's the number one rule in the classroom. Put downs are not allowed. It is never okay to embarrass anyone. Understand? We all need to feel comfortable here. Everyone nods, but I'm not taking any chances. I'm keeping my secret all to myself. And that's where we're gonna stop for today and we'll finish up uh, this chapter, hopefully tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. Goodbye.